back to Gita in a moment, but let's raise some of those questions and go to expert voices on that. Is China now the big concern? Is China going to top the agenda at this Biden Modi meeting there? Mojo, as it's being called. Uh, that's going to be one of the big questions that we're going to raise. We're also going to look at whether the two sides, what are the areas that they share or the commonalities which they will be building on during this visit. Uh, what about issues like Afghanistan? What about the vaccine issue? Is this a relationship where trust still needs to be built? Given that Mr. Modi, remember, when the Trump government was in power, had gone to Houston and said, up ki bar, Trump sarkar. So how is that all going to play out in the light of a new administration there in Washington? Bipartisan consensus on issues, but what about the chemistry that is often needed between two leaders? So the Biden-Modi one-on-one -on -one is our top focus at the moment. I'm joined by Meera Shankar. She's been former uh, ambassador to the United States. Appreciate your joining us. Amitabh Mattu, uh, he's been a driving force for the Australia India Institute, also someone who is a, one of India's leading international affairs scholars. Remember, there's a quad where Australia is going to play an important role uh, later today. We're also joined by Venu Rajamoni, a senior IFS officer, former ambassador, and someone who has been tracking China in particular for years, so brings us that expertise. I'm also joined by... Uh, Irfan Nuruddin and Irfan Nuruddin is there in Washington and he remember is part of the South Asia program at uh, the Atlantic Center and has much to offer also from Georgetown University. So thank you all very much for joining us. We'll also be joined in a moment by Michael Kugelman, Deputy Director of the Asia program. But uh, to you, uh, uh, Meera Shankar first, you've seen this before uh, in terms of Indian uh, uh, leaders coming to Washington. Is this as some suggest a meeting where the two leaders now need to build a personal equation which goes beyond uh, just uh, the ticklish issues that they will confront. How important is the building of a personal chemistry between Prime Minister Modi and President Biden for the relationship to be taken forward? Or do you believe there's so much of bipartisan consensus that individual differences or individual personality clashes won't matter? Well, firstly, I think that the relationship has uh, acquired institutional strength mm -hmm. and is propelled by an increasing convergence of strategic and economic interests between the two countries as also a comfort level because of shared values. So I think those are the key factors propelling the relationship. If there is good chemistry between the leaders, it certainly helps. But if you take a look at the Biden administration, then they are focusing on grand strategy and the challenge posed by China. And in evolving their strategy, they have come to the conclusion that India is a key partner for them in this process in Asia, not only because of our shared values, but also because of our shared strategic concerns and the fact that we could be, you know, one of the largest economies in the future. So I think that um, personal issues and those kind of things are not going to dictate uh, what the relationship is going to be like. And certainly the U.S. has made it clear that it prioritizes this aspect uh, in terms of defining its relationship with India. China is the big word, uh, the elephant in the room, Amitabh Mattu, because this is going to be followed in an hour or two by a meeting of the Quad, which will include uh, Australia, Japan, and uh, the United States and India. And there are already suggestions from the Chinese that this is a clique which is being built, 